a number of clinical trials now and observational registries have shown that thrombosis can develop on the leaflet of biprosthetic valves, both surgical and transcatheter. It was first detected in transcatheter valves, but it's subsequently been shown to affect all bioprosthetic valves. We still don't really know what it means. Does it cause more strokes? No one's ever been able to really show that. Could it impact the, the longevity or the durability of these valves? Possibly, but the only way we'll find that out is by following these patients for many, many years. So in the short term, we're stuck with this phenomenon, which is we see a stuck leaflet with thrombus on it, so the leaflet's not opening and closing, and it's very hard for us to believe that that's a good thing. And the other uh, observation from some of the registries in the past was that patients who happen to be on oral anticoagulation, so warfarin or uh, uh, DOAX, or a, a direct oral anticoagulant drug, seem to have a lot less of this leaflet thrombosis, which kind of makes sense. If you're on blood thinner, you're less likely to develop thrombosis. And so the rationale of this study was to take a low risk patient population, meaning a younger TABA population, and randomize these patients to receive either antiplatelet drugs or anticoagulation with warfarin for one month after the TAVA. And then we look at them all up 30 days with a CT scan to see whether they have leaflet thrombosis or not, and whether the, uh, the oral anticoagulation reduced or prevented this phenomenon from occurring. So this was a randomized controlled trial, uh, multi-center in the US. And the original study design was for 200 patients to be randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive either antiplatelets, aspirin, uh, or uh, warfarin after TAVA. So these were low-risk patients with an SDS score of less than three, typical for the low-risk studies that you've seen published uh, just in the last year, uh, which led to the approval of low-risk uh, TAVA in the US. And so uh, that was the randomized cohort. And then patients who were low risk, but who, for example, had another indication for anticoagulation, they had atrial fibrillation, they had a DVT, they had a PE, or patients who had a bleeding problem during the TAVA, meaning it wouldn't be a appropriate to randomize them and potentially end up on warfarin, were enrolled in a separate registry arm as well. So we have the randomized cohort at the center of the trial and a registry cohort on the side. So uh, first things first, uh, zero mortality, zero disabling stroke at 30 days, which is consistent with all of the low-risk data we've seen so far, which is if you take a low-risk group of patients and you do TAVA, you get excellent results. Um, so zero mortality, zero disabling stroke, but also very good hemodynamics, very low rates of in-hospital and 30-day complications in terms of vascular access complications, uh, low pacemaker rate. The sort of the typical findings for a clinical trial in TAVA. Um, one of the most uh, reassuring things was that we didn't see excess bleeding in the patients who were randomized to anticoagulation. So that's one of the key safety endpoints that we were looking at in this study was, are we causing more bleeding by randomizing, putting patients on oral anticoagulation, which we wouldn't normally do as standard of care at the moment, at least, in TAVA. It is important to remember that the current surgical guidelines recommend that every patient who receives a bioprosthetic surgical valve should have three months of warfarin uh, afterwards, and it's specifically to prevent these sorts of phenomena. Many surgeons, both in the US and abroad, don't do that. They just use aspirin because they worry about bleeding. And certainly, I think bleeding is something to be concerned about in, the very older, in an older population. You know, in your typical 80-year-old TAVA patient, blood thinners are often a problem. But I think these are younger patients. Average age in this study was 73. And very similar to all of the other low-risk studies, these are younger patients with fewer comorbidities and fewer bleeding risk factors. So we were very pleased to see that there was no excess bleeding. But then specifically in terms of the leaflet thrombosis, so in the randomized cohort, the instance of leaflet thrombosis in the aspirin arm was 16.3%, and in the anticoagulation arm was 4.7%. So that's quite a dramatic reduction. Unfortunately, partway through our study, low risk was approved in the US. And almost overnight, that made enrolling in a randomized trial in low risk patients very difficult. And so we locked the data with only 94 patients uh, randomized as opposed to the 200 that we, uh, we initially tried to get. And so despite having that quite remarkable difference in absolute value, 16.3 and 4.7, the p-value was just missed statistical significance, 0.07. 
But if we then take the patients who are in the registry arm, of which there were 30, and we put them into the groups depending on whether they were on all anticoagulation or antiplatelet therapy, we then ended up with uh, a rate of hypotenuse leaflet thickening or leaflet thrombosis in the oral anticoagulation arm of 16.4%, sorry, of, in the aspirin arm of 16.4%, and in the oral anticoagulation of 3.1%. And that p-value is very positive, 0.01, which suggests that there really is a signal that, this is, this, that warfarin is an effective uh, strategy to reduce leaflet thrombosis at 30 days. So if I could summarize what we found, essentially warfarin did effectively reduce, if not completely prevent the phenomenon of leaflet thrombosis with 16 down to 3% uh, incidence without causing excessive bleeding. The big question is what do we do with this data? Where do we go next? Should every TAVA patient be given warfarin? I think we should treat this as a feasibility study because that's what it was um, and as a hypothesis generating study. And I think we will need to obviously follow these patients long term. And there are other data sets from the low risk TAVA studies who are being followed long term. And if this phenomenon of lethal process does turn out to be a predictor of premature deterioration or, or um, failure of these bioprosthetic TAVA valves, then I think there will definitely be a move within the community to be more aggressive with anticoagulation in these younger, low risk patients who are going to live much longer with their transcatheter valve. For now, I think we also need to think carefully about whether we need more studies on this. And certainly, uh, I think it will, I'm looking forward to the discussion at the, uh, the session tomorrow.